Coming to you from the haunted French Quarter. The horror. <laughs> it's the little podcast of horrors with James, Christina, and Chris. So this is our show. Yep. And um, I'm James. I'm Christina. Everybody knows my name. <laughs> Big Papa Chris. <laughs> Big Papa Chris. Oh, yeah. And today I am hosting today's episode. But first, what is everyone drinking? I'll go ahead and tell you right now, I'm not drinking anything. Coffee. Yes. <laughs> it's been yeah. a stormy spring weekend here in Dallas. So if I wasn't drinking coffee i'd be asleep for this episode (laughs) i'm drinking hot tea so (laughs) yeah i will probably go get myself a big glass of water at some point because i'm a little parched but i want to start i'm good so all righty well in keeping with um my theme we will be discussing today uh, we will be talking about history and hauntings as we discuss the La Lori Mansion. Now, this is located in the French Quarter of New Orleans. <gasps> yes. And I will probably be discussing in further episodes other ghost hauntings of the French Quarter. I could probably do several episodes about all the So the ghosts like throw beads at people and get out in the balcony and take off their shirts and stuff? Um... You're not completely far off in some in this story. I mean, you, yeah, kind of. Um, a lot of people already know about this mansion thanks to the show um, American Horror Story, the season mm-hmm. Coven, because it revolves around that. I mean, very loosely, it's their version, but it's I don't know, not I wouldn't say historically accurate, but it's it's there. Um, but for anyone who may not know of this really dark place. And I doubt there are a few who, who don't know about it. I mean, this place is a place of unspeakable horror, um, which when I tell you the things that occurred here, it won't surprise you that this place is said to be quite haunted. Well, yeah, you know? I mean, like what happens in Mardi Gras stays in Mardi Gras, right? So. Yeah. So apparently what happens at the LaLaurie Mansion, unfortunately, stays at the LaLaurie Mansion. Except now, for today. We're just going to spill it out to everybody. Exactly. It's not staying now, anyway. Now, trigger warning, I will be discussing the deaths of children, but I will keep the details as ungraphic. Is that a word? Ungraphic? I will it, be, is now. it is now, as I can. Uh, the mansion is located in um, on Royal Street in New Orleans, and this was once the home of a Delphine LaLaurie, hence the LaLaurie Mansion. She was a trice-married socialite known throughout the city for her cruelty and abuse towards her slaves. Car driving by. Also try saying LaLaurie three times fast. Can't LaLaurie, LaLaurie, LaLaurie. Mm, it's not that hard. Nope. Nailed it. <laughs> yeah, I did. Um, <laughs> Uh, Anyway, uh, but no one knew the full scope of her depravity until a fire in the mansion in 1834. Now, before we get to that, I haven't been drinking. Now, before we get to that, (laughs) um, there had been 12 recorded. I can't talk. Recorded? Am I Elmer Fudd now? Wow, there's, there's ghosts in this house today. Yes, that's how you should do the whole episode. <laughs> I'm just going to do it. No. Uh, there had been 12 recorded slave deaths at the mansion over a four-year period, though the causes of these deaths Whoa. were never mentioned. They included a cook and four of her children, ranging from the ages of 13 to just four years old. A neighbor of the mansion had witnessed a child believed to be around the age of 12 fall to her death from the roof of the mansion while attempting to escape being whipped (gasps) by Delphine. Oh, yeah. And we'll come back to her, too. Um, Her cruelty became so well known that a lawyer was actually sent to the residence to conduct an investigation. 
because there were actually laws for the upkeep of slaves. I mean, we live in the South, and so we've heard all the horror stories down here. And so I was a little surprised, mm-hmm. like, there were actually laws to somewhat protect an other enslaved human beings. I mean. Uh, how enforced was it, though? I don't uh, know. Not, not very well. the answer to that. Yeah, I think that's the real question. How enforced was that? Well, this actually led to the Lalories being found guilty of illegal cruelty, and they were forced to give up nine slaves. However, these nine slaves just ended up being bought back by the Lalories through relatives and were ultimately returned to the mansion. Needless yeah, to I say... I, I guess the way to frame this so that no one gets idea of them... Um, 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 I'm actually slave. It wasn't that bad to be a slave in the South. It's like, no, no, no. Is the, the, the difference we're talking about here is being a uh, complete and utter monster versus bonus points because being a monster isn't enough. You've got to do some, you got to get some extra depravity in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's not enough that you have other human beings enslaved. Oh, but you don't even know yet. Um, Needless to say, everyone knew these people were absolute shitheads, but no one had any clue just how utterly fucking insane these people were until the fire I mentioned uh, earlier broke out. And that actually ended up revealing the full scope of just how bad it truly was. On April 10th, 1834, the fire broke out in the mansion starting in the kitchen. Nearby citizens attempted to aid in evacuating the slaves from their quarters, but Delphine refused to give them the keys to unlock said quarters. So taking oh. matters... Yeah, well, she has also had reasons. Uh, because mm-hmm. in taking matters into their own hands, these citizens broke down the doors of the quarters only to stumble into an actual horror scene. Seven slaves were found horribly mutilated, However, I'm not going to say on this podcast in what ways, but take my word for it. It's the stuff of nightmares. Yeah. They were suspended by their necks and their limbs stretched or severed. And they were still alive, all in the (gasps) attic. Yeah, they weren't dead. At least not these seven. Um, It's a place they later learned was a place the slaves all feared. They stated they had been imprisoned in these quarters for months. So we're going to just need to to pause every five minutes to talk about puppies and kittens in order to kind of maybe I mean, like I I had to take breaks uh, reading about this because it it was there was a mixture of utter disgust and anger and then just heartbreak. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Like, you know. And and to anybody listening, I'm so sorry if if this is upsetting, I will keep the depravity as brief as I can. Uh, mainly I'm trying to talk about it just so you kind of understand why this place is haunted probably. If, right. You know, yeah. if, trying to make you understand. I mean, what I like about puppies is their their little wet noses. I actually like little beagles. They're precious. If people are watching on YouTube, there is a cat in the background in James's and a dog in the background of mine. So if you want to focus on that for a second. Yeah. And then come back. Okay. Yeah. Um, upon further investigation, they found the cook chained to the stove by her ankle she had stated she had started the fire in a suicide attempt as she feared as she feared she too would be sent to the attic like the others the townspeople were in no less of a better term enraged um around four thousand people ransacked the home smashing the windows tearing down doors and more or less left the building nothing more than a demolished shell However, unfortunately, this gave LaLaurie the opportunity to escape. When it was all over, both she and her driver were missing. It's believed that they fled to Paris, according to archival records, but nothing definitive. So, you know, yeah. Oh, my so God. She, yeah, yes. I just teared up like the- Oh, yeah. Um, there were also Did reports. You know that, what? That rabbits perform an athletic leap. And it's called a binky when they're happy. I like that. That's so nice. when a bunny not, hops happily, it's, actually, it's, <laughs> it's got a really, term for it. It's, it's called it's not, or really, it's called binky. It's not really helping. Um, there were also reports. Thank you for your efforts. <laughs> but yeah, thank you. There were also reports that w- there were several dead bodies in the attic as well. The bodies 
mutilated beyond recognition. Um, so really, it's not a surprise to, that this place is believed to be super haunted. So, um, but yeah, we don't know really what happened to Madame LaLaurie after that. Um, it's believed that she died, I think, in 1849, uh, according to certain relatives and letters. However, there's a grave in New Orleans with her name on it, with her maiden name, too, that some believe is her grave and that she just kind of secretly either came back to New Orleans or I don't know. Needless to say, it's a mystery oh. of what happened to her. And quite frankly, I don't care. Uh, she died and I, I hope she died miserable and in pain. And if there's a hell, uh, that bitch is there. I mean, that woman made H.H. H. Holmes and Jack the Ripper look like noobs. Did you know uh, that bunnies purr when they're content and relaxed? I did, actually. I did. I did not know that. Well, either way, it's okay now because we're done with that part. Now we're going to get into the, if you want to call it fun, the ghost stuff. They can jump as high as 90 centimeters in one leap. Get off the bunnies, man. This is my <laughs> show. <laughs> Did you know that rats won't leave wounded uh, rats? Like if they're hurt, they'll stay with them. <gasps> no, I didn't know that. I read that during my uh, trying to deal with my rat phobia. I have a severe rat phobia, like bad. Um, so over the years, the building has been many things. It's been a conservatory. It's been an all girls school. And it's even been an apartment building in 1894 police responded to a murder that occurred while it was an apartment building. Neighbors in the building reported that the victim had claimed to have trouble with sprites and a demon who said he, it wouldn't rest until he met his end. Oh, oh God. God. Also during this time, a family residing in the building had their own experiences, or rather the father. The couple had a newborn baby and the husband would wake in the middle of the night to see a woman standing over the crib. At first, he thought it was his wife, only to discover she was actually asleep next to him. The other thing was that the woman standing over the crib had long, dark red hair, which his wife did not have. The figure, of course, then ran away, but the father did not give chase. Instead, like any good dad, he wanted to check on his baby, and it's a good thing he did. As he reported to have found the baby sock had been removed from their foot and stuffed into the baby's mouth. Oh, my God. What a bitch. Bitch. Um, <laughs> yeah. Did she like, run around and kick orphans and push grandmas in the traffic? And so, like that's all her whole MO. I don't know, man. But like, damn, this woman was just, like vile. And if this is her ghost, which it would be because this is at this point where in the 1890s, um, she's long dead. It's like, even in the afterlife, she's still being a super bitch. I mean, so, so you've got, like, super she Jack the Ripper in your home. Yeah. A demon waiting for you to croak. And then a bunch of adorable little sprites. One of these things is not like the others. I know, right? Well, I mean, I mean, think about it. It's like multiple different spirits of different victims so I don't know it, about the sprites where they just kind of just chilling playing around i guess till the demon or the demon in the corner i don't know i guess until the demon walk in and then be like shit it's him let's get out of here or the red-haired woman that doesn't like babies so i don't know oh uh during the time when it was an all-girls school uh many of the mm -hmm. students yeah it was an all at one point so at one point it was an all-girls school did um, you tell us that and i didn't register it <laughs> I thought I did. Hold on. Okay. Sometimes I, you know, neither of us detail. Yeah. You know, yeah. Really. I, said, I, I said earlier, over the years, the building had been a conservatory, an all girls school, and an apartment building. So, oh, I'm sorry. That for some reason, yeah, sorry. Right I, was, me. I was thinking about bunnies. That's okay. I'm, dr I'm drunk off tea, apparently, and that's it. So, that, okay. That, that's, that's why they love it in England. Tea. That's why they do. <laughs> it's just like, oh. Christ, thank you. So the world's creepiest all-girls school. I got yeah. it. Uh, so yeah, uh, during the time uh, when it was an all-girls school, many of the students reported to their teachers scratches on their arms. And when asked who did this to them, the girls simply said, that woman. The home eventually became a residence where the family often heard in the room where the slaves were kept moaning 
phantom oh. footsteps and the sounds of pots and pans banging together. There have been reports of doors opening with no one there, and even the sighting of a man in a top hat coming from behind an armoire in the middle of the night. Like Apparently, a shadow man with the top hat? I know, like that's what hat? I thought of. I'm like, did he yeah. just come out and be like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Welcome it's the to the man. House of Horrors, the shit that I have seen while haunting <laughs> this place. Oh, uh, there was also a sighting of a girl sitting up on the roof, believed to be the spirit of the girl oh. who fell to her death trying to escape Delphine's wrath. Um, she's been seen sitting on the roof. Um, there was also apparently a, a, while a tour was going, they were standing outside of the house and the tour guide talked about her and mentioned her by name. The street lamp that had been broken came on and got real bright, according to witnesses. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Uh, witnesses have heard screams coming from the building and dark shadows lurking on the balcony. So that's why when you were all like, are they like the spirits of them like wanting beads and standing out on the... <laughs> like they are. They're all like... I've been flashing people. I mean, it's creepy. I mean, they kind of are. I mean, they're not dressed. There's no clothes on them, but they can see they're just shadowy people. They're shadowy people again. Um, there's been reports of a man in chains and a woman with glaring eyes. So the reports go on and on and on and on up until just recently in the last few years, a woman was touring downtown New Orleans with a, a ghost tour. When they came upon the mansion, the tour guide told everyone to take plenty of pictures because you never know what you're going to catch. And this woman sure did not realize what she was going to catch. What'd she get? I'm about to show y'all. This is the part. <laughs> oh. That's show and tell if I can. So the first image um, didn't really catch anything. It was just the outside of the LaLaurie house. That's it. But the second image that you can see here, and for anybody uh, listening, I'm showing my two co-hosts the first image. That's the outside of the LaLaurie house. And if you look closely, you see the image of a woman on the right, see-through, in motion blur, but she's walking that was not there. And if you look closely enough, she's wearing what appears to be the style of dress of the Victorian times or that of the 19th century. Are we allowed to like share our screen so that people, if they watch YouTube, can see this? Oh, I guess I could, couldn't I? All I see is a blurry person with the shoe. Yeah. Yeah. That one that's is all the I first. See too. Yeah. That's all. That's the first image here. I'll just do it like this then. So can you see right here? Okay. Yeah. Blurry yeah. With the shoe. So as of wait, right here, right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But she wasn't there. And if you look closely enough, like you can see like the dress. That sort of thing, but you'll but see it like a tennis shoe. What's it that? looks like a tennis shoe to me. Yeah, I was thinking it's a tennis shoe, but okay. Maybe it was casual day. Maybe it was. <laughs> uh, let's see. Like here. practical footwear. Yeah. And maybe she wasn't, maybe they didn't know she was there because she was going by so freaking fast on her jog. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. However, and as you can see here, the second image. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yes. Okay, I see that. Yeah, you can see the dress. Her hair was up, and nobody saw this woman. Nobody. So she's really short. No. Oh no, these doors are huge, dude. Oh, it's uh, not yeah, like a mini these are dress? no. These are like nine foot tall doors, uh, or ten. They're they're very large doors. Um, no, she's about from from if you, you know compared to everything by this light, she's I don't know average height but the fact is is that nobody saw her you can see through her like right here like you can mm -hmm. see part of the door and while everything else seems pretty clear like she's just this weird strange blurry figure and it's almost like i mean you could say like it's just that you know it's cutting her off right here because you can see a little bit of her dress on this side but at the same time it's <laughs> It's just something you can't explain. Now, granted, yeah. yeah, you could easily argue that somebody just in costume is walking down the street and she caught an image of it and it's motion blur. And then just everybody's like pretending they didn't see her so they can say they saw a ghost. 
I mean, almost yeah, like but... Halloween spoke to me. What debunking isn't what this show's about. So. No. <laughs> and the thing is, you you can debunk, you can try to debunk a lot of things, but mm-hmm. unless you were there, we don't know. So all we can do I is mean, speculate. I'm not debunking. I'm just believing mm-hmm. smoke would be a cool entrance. I guess. Oh yeah, yeah. But many, but many people that's believe. Spooky. Yeah, many people believe that's actually the ghost of of, of Delphine Lalori herself. So. So wait, what did you say that green door, the really tall one, was the door? to the house like the entrance of the house yeah yeah as i believe so okay. from what i read in the article that that's them that's right out front of the lalori house um so yeah mm-hmm. but is it a ghost i would want to appear if i were a ghost it's just like billowing smoke appears and i just kind of oh immerse. yeah That'd be oh, just like oozing out of the sewer drain <laughs> yeah. yeah i just want to <laughs> I would freak out. I mean, like, I'd be like, good Lord. Uh, But needless to say, to this day, um, you'll love this, James. A little fun fact. Nicolas Cage owned this house for like two years. He bought it. He bought it in 2007. Unfortunately, he lost it. Um, It went up. uh, It went into foreclosure and got bought at auction. Um, And the owner today apparently uh, keeps it sealed. Like he does not let whoever owns it. It's a private owner and they do not let anybody go inside. Oh, I just want to imagine Nicolas Cage being haunted by all these things. Yeah. I mean, did he ever say anything about it? Yeah. Nicolas Cage purchased the home in 2006 for $3.4 million. Oh, wow. Um, uh, Apparently, Cage bought the mansion to get inspiration to write a horror novel, which he didn't really get too far on. (laughs) Okay. Um, Yeah. That's an extravagant uh, yeah. inspo purchase. <laughs> yes, and this is this is according to an article in Vanity Fair. Um, he later told the New York Daily News that owning the Lalori Mansion was a childhood dream come true. Of course, God, Nick Cage, dude, why? Um, uh, yes, he got he bought the mansion to get inspiration to write a horror novel. The novel, however, was never written, and Cage lost the home to foreclosure in 2009. I just want to believe that he sat around in it in his priest outfit with his just wide eyed face at all from times. From face off, from and face they, off, they, and they were too. The ghosts were too freaked out to, to to even mess with him. Oh my God! Could you imagine him in a seance? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, the, the ghosts are like, who the hell is this guy? This guy is nuts. And we were, I mean, like, and we knew Le, we knew Delphine. Delphine's over there like, I don't know who this asshole is. I'd rather be in hell. No, I'm kidding. I actually love Nick, like, Nick Cage. I, I love Nick Cage movies. It's a guilty pleasure. Gone in 60 Seconds. National Treasure. He is the, great. The Rock. I- I still want to see that one, The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. I still have not watched that or Renfield. So good. And Renfield's good too. Renfield's so good. Oh, we saw we saw both. And we me and Kate loved it, both of them. Um, but anyway, uh, that's pretty much all there is to the LaLaurie Mansion. You can visit it even today. Um, it has gone through, like I said, various versions. Like I said, it's also been a furniture store. Uh Gosh, what else? And it's been rebuilt um, in many ways, you know, because of the, you know, of the riot and what and and they, it was just left in disrepair. And so a lot of people would argue it's almost not the same building that it was during her time. But but either way, you can you can at the very least visit it today on the outside. You can walk past it and maybe see the young girl sitting on the roof or Maybe see that bitch's ghost, uh, Lalori, walking past. Uh, uh, who knows? But it was a place of unspeakable horror and tragedy. Yeah. Uh, one medium, she visited it and she just said, uh, if you believe in medium, she just said that uh, she just felt a great, she actually said she felt a great sadness. Um, but then she also mentioned that m- the feeling she got was that um most of the spirits in the house weren't afraid anymore because um because Josephine or yeah Delphine Delphine was long gone or at least did not have the power anymore that she did and so she got the sense that the spirits there were mostly at peace now or just 
at least not misery or fear or pain or anything like that. Okay. So I was like, okay. I mean, that's something. Just not just, ready to move on. I guess not. Just not ready to oh. move on. But I mean, in the end, it's ghosts. We don't, you know, if ghosts are real, we don't know why they linger. We don't know why they stay True. behind. We theorize of unfinished business or they don't know they're dead or, you know, any of those old tales, but we don't know. We don't know why they linger. All we can do is try to understand, you know, study, you know, the experiences, talk to people who have had experiences and do our best to uh, theorize. But but that's crazy. Too, I'm that's sure you do. Crazy. You, can, uh, you can travel to Okodashima, which is a small Japanese island, um, also known as Bunny Island. Because it's the entire <laughs> island populated with bunnies, and you can you can go visit them. They're they're considered tame, and they're used to having people feed them. So, oh, could you like so could you like go there and like could you buy the whole island and then like forbid anybody else coming there? And it's just you and the bunnies get to the point where they re- they think that you are the the only one of your kind, and then you become king of the bunnies. Yes, there absolutely. Life goals. <laughs> King of the bunnies. Like like the bunnies start like building you a throne, you know, out of twigs and yes. You know, and eventually like they all like just circle around you and you could like give them little food that they can't that is, normally get. And they'll just think, no, actually you'll be the bunny god to them. They'll just be like that is accurate. There you go. So yeah. That's better than Snake Island. <laughs> which is an island that is Filled to the brim with deadly snakes, you can't even set foot on it. Because you'll oh, die. Wow. Cause you'll die. Wait, where is that? I think it's near Italy. I could be wrong. You can look it up. Good, as long as it's not near Bunny Island. No, it's not near Bunny Island. <laughs> Two islands I don't want to have, have any proximity to each other. Would they have like a war? It's like the Great Bunny Snake Island Wars. <laughs> I don't know. I think the the greatest war I ever heard of was this island that apparently is in dispute of between Canada and the United States, and it's barren. And to this day, Canada and and the U.S. constantly fight over who owns it. But what they do is the when they come, the military comes to whatever reason they have to come there, they'll leave a bottle of like American whiskey. And then when the Canadians come, they get rid of the whis- that whiskey and they put Canadian whiskey and it just goes back. And forth. That's exactly how I'd expect the U.S.-Canadian war to go down. <laughs> yeah. Just as passive aggressive as one could possibly be. Yeah. So, But there is alcohol involved. And there's alcohol involved. Because there has to be. <laughs> and there's alcohol involved. So, yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, if you enjoyed the story, please like and share it. Um, and if you feel so uh, moved to, you can donate um, to uh, Little Podcast of Horrors. We have a website, littlepodcastofhorrors.com. You can also email us at littlepodcasthorrors at gmail.com. And with that, yeah, that's it. So. Good job, Chris. I really liked the pictures. So people need to watch this on YouTube to see yep. those. Yep. We will. Uh, and of course the episode, yeah, we will uh, include if you, you can watch us on YouTube and take a wild guess what you have to type in to see us on YouTube. <laughs> bunny Are we facts a- 101. That's it. And you're <laughs> going to say something about bunnies. Bunnies with their big floppy ears. I don't know. Are we? Al- oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Are we? Oh, what? I like to interrupt. Are we allowed to put those pictures on our Instagram? I don't see why not. They're like, on I guess all, so. I found them on multiple ghost websites and I don't think they're copyrighted. They're just, I mean, you know, they're just pictures. Maybe something we look into, but yeah. Sorry, with the bunnies thing, I was going to say, I just think of Monty Python. He's like, he's like, like we get to Bunny Island and it turns out they're, <laughs> they're, they're things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Big nasty pointy teeth that I fast for blood I've never seen. <laughs> so, yeah, we get there and that's the type of bunnies they are. And I'm just looking at you like, yeah, there goes your little, uh, your little, your little illusion. You brought us to an island of bunny horror. So, anyway. All right, thanks everybody. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> Till next time. 
Arrivederci. Stay tuned for bunny facts. <laughs> bunny facts.